what we do here is go back, 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 back. What's going on, everybody? Just wanted to say hello and give a shout out to Randall. You could pause that and read that there for a minute. Uh, shout out to you guys and thanks for the support. Uh, I'm going to do a good update in this video. I'm going to show you the 20 gallon long. Uh, right now, it's serving as a frag tank, but I show it to you at night because right now, in a minute, when I show you the daylight, uh, you guys are going to say, damn, the tank is ugly. The reason why it's ugly is because I haven't done a water change on it since it's been up. Uh, it's been up for several months now and all I've been doing is topping off the tank with water, you know, dosing a few elements here and there and uh, that's about it. Uh, you can see I haven't even cleaned the glass but you know what, I'm going back to basics. I wanted to see how long it would take me to, uh, you know, break out an algae and all that good stuff and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it back to uh, shape by doing water changes, running a little bit of GFO on here, and uh, just keeping it nice and clean, guys. I did actually use that Phosphate RX. Um, I do use it on this tank. It's not uh, the way to go, guys. You know, you do have to do your water changes. I think it's the best way to do, keep your tank looking clean, doing water changes, and today I just barely did a 10-gallon water change on this tank. I was going to go ahead and change all 20 gallons, but I decided not to do it because I didn't want to disturb the tank too much. I probably would have been okay if I did do a 20 gallon water change, uh, even though this is a 20 gallon tank. Uh, that's because most of the bacteria live in the live rock, which I have this big chunk of live rock because I was changing out the uh, 180. And, most of the, and I have a lot of beneficial bacteria living in that uh, matrix by Seachem. Another thing that I'm going to do is good old vinegar. Not only is it good to uh, clean equipment and clean windows and things like that, it's a great carbon source for uh, bacteria. The bacteria multiply by eating the vinegar because it's the carbon source, which is sugar and all that good stuff. And then the protein skimmer skims it out. But, and it'll skim it out because it'll come out with some really, really dark skim mate. So those of you who have heard of uh, bio pellets, it's the same thing. You're using a carbon source to feed to the bacteria. Then that bacteria eats the bio pellets, that plastic, because it has some kind of resin on it that has sugar, and it tumbles, and then the protein skimmer cleans it out. But I hate bio pellets. I know a lot of you use it. Me personally, I, I used it before in the past and uh, made a huge mess for me in the tank. But I want you guys to do your own research. Research carbon dosing, vodka dosing, and go from there. I've had a lot of questions on my light. I have the Coral Box LED, um, and I got it from Reef Breeders. A lot of people have been asking about it. I just want to cover this real quick. I'm going to do a separate video, not to bore everybody else who doesn't have the uh, Coral Box, but if you want to see it, I'm going to be doing a separate video for you guys, and you guys can check that out, see my settings, and uh, what's been working really good for me. My frags have been growing really well under this light. I just haven't maintained the tank. Uh, that's all going to change. And uh, you know what? I'm not going to try to hide anything from you guys. Uh, if the tank looks like crap, I'm going to go ahead and show it and show you how I got rid of it, how I got it back to shape and things like that. But I, for the main part, I was using that phosphate RX and not doing any water changes. I did have a, a protein skimmer on here. I did have a hang on back and... Uh, I still got um, some nasty little algae, but uh, it's going to go ahead and change because uh, it's going to be back on the ball, guys. So speaking of the nutrient export using vinegar, this is how dark my skin mate comes out because I am doing it 
on my uh, 180. The way that I do it is I just have a dose 5 ml twice a day. Split that 5 ml to 2.5 ml um, during the nighttime, and uh, it pulls out some dark skin mate. Uh, I have it hooked up with the doser, and with that, I'm also running a chato. Um, the crazy thing is, I had only a little tiny bit of chato, and I had it in my uh, my drains, guys, and I and I didn't have no light on there or anything like that. Just where my drain of my 180, um, and I decided to go ahead and pit a little strand that I did have, and it's bal ballooned into this big amount of a uh, chato. And what I want to show you is these pods. Uh, I have all kinds of little algae here. I have that red cotton candy algae, which is not a big deal to me um, because I have pods. And if I do want to make that cotton candy algae go away, I just turn off, go with the lights out for a little bit. With the lights out, I'm talking about two to three days and uh, that cotton candy algae will just go away. But the reason why it's growing is because I haven't turned off the uh, light bulb down in my sump area at all since I've had this thing and this chato has just ballooned. Now the light bulb that I'm using, it's nothing special. I went to Home Depot, picked up an LED, one that says daylight, and uh, have it on 24 seven. And as you can see, the chato is nice and dark and there's pods all over the place. If you're wondering what pods are, they're natural food source for your uh, fish and uh, they actually do clean up your tank a little bit. I just showed one real quick and you could see that it's pretty much a clear little bug and uh, they're good for your tank man so take care of your pods. This is the light bulb that I use. Nothing fancy, nothing special. It's just an LED daylight uh, bulb and there you go the Eco Smart from Home Depot. Uh, just make try to make sure you buy the right bulb for your uh, lamp thing. Uh, nothing uh, fancy or anything like that. It tells you what size the maximum watch you can use. Uh, you can pause that and it'll tell you which ones you can use and just follow the directions so that way you don't have any type of fire and things like that. Make sure you're home when you first set it up and so that way you make sure everything is good. Another thing real quick guys is uh, I zip stripped my cord up to the top of the, the uh, stand so that way in case if it did get knocked down for whatever reason it wouldn't fall into the tank. My water change is as follows, 20 gallons every two weeks. Um, I, as you can see on my brood trash can, um, it's only used for my salt water, my water changes and topping off my, my water ATO. And I used it by five gallon increments. And uh, what I'm using to mix it is that size pump that I picked up from D. Um, I'm not using it as a return pump. I actually want a DC return pump, which I'm planning on getting later on down the road. For this 180, but uh, for now, this is a great uh, pump to mix up my uh, salt water. Now, another thing that I've been doing is using an MJ 1200. I got some long hose that way, I don't have to be carrying all these buckets around. I just have it there, and at the end, I have it zip tied as tight as possible, and then I just plug it in with the into my outlet underneath the tank, pump it in, in into my ATL reservoir, or back into the sump after the water changes. And I have plenty of holes right here. Um, if you guys need the size diameter or for that, let me know and I'll be happy to share with that with you. The great thing is I make less of a mess. I use a brute container to carry everything. Uh, I have I finally have my stuff dialed in the way I want. Before I would use these five gallon buckets and they'd be all over the place. Um, I did want to show you this right here. Pretty cool. I got a shout out by uh, Marine Depot for using the reef welder. Uh, and it's good stuff guys. Uh, I used some clear one. It's just a little bunch of little plastic beads. It's supposed to be purple and I kind of doubted that this uh, purple would be enough to make it all look good. But uh, it's good stuff guys. It's strong and all you got to do is uh, boil some water. Ordinarily I did not like putty guys. The traditional putty makes your skimmer go nuts. Um, it cures really fast. Uh, you have a short working period. But if anything like that happens with this uh, reef welder stuff, it's plastic. So all you need is hot water. Now I did try using it under the tap, hot water coming from the faucet. It wasn't hot enough. I did try microwaving it. I didn't like it. The best way for me 
was to get some hot water and just boil it, pour it in a bowl, and then work with it. And then if it got hard again, just put some more hot water. Now you notice the beads turn clear. That's the way you want it, guys. You want it to be clear so that way you can work with it. And this one is purple. Like I said, I didn't think it was going to be complete, turn the whole putty completely purple, but it did. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit hard right here. Um, I had been mixing it for a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some more hot water in it and go from there. But it's good stuff. Um, and if you do get it, they sell it on Marine Depot. But I recommend buying the larger putty. Um, but because this is the uh, second bottle that I, I used. I used some a bottle of clear and a, a second bottle of the purple stuff. And as you can see, I made some pretty cool uh, structures out of this, out of this Tonga branch that I always had in my tank, but I never wanted to throw away. And as you can see, the putty right there is holding it all together. Now my plans for this Tonga branch is to stick some different SPS on this rock. And it's going to be cool because uh, I'll just use it to the uh, frag plugs and go from there. Now why did I buy this stuff? Because I got some shelf rock. Um, I think tanks with shelf rock look awesome. Um, and I'm going to use that shelf rock for different things. And not only that, I was talking about a couple videos ago about changing my aquascape. And the use of this uh, reef welder has helped me. Um, I thought about buying that uh, cement mix and things like that. But the thing is, those things, you can't use them in your water underneath the tank. Um, now, they say you can use them in, in the tank with water and everything like that. But my tank is already established. So I wanted to use the shelf rock on existing rock. And I think it came out pretty good. Um, I, was, I did do like a weight test. I picked it up and I was tw twirling and things like that. And uh, as you can see, it's holding up pretty good. And uh, I like the way that it came out. It has a bunch of different little caves for the fish. And uh, I'm going to do my best to keep those caves open. And that way I can just enjoy the way the fish swim in, in and out of the uh, aquascape. Another cool thing for me is I made more rooms for frags on my sand bed. Um, by doing this, I cleared up quite a bit because I stacked some of the rocks. This rock structure is actually three rocks put together. Um, I don't like the rock wall look. I like different pieces and structures so that way my fish can swim around. I have room for uh, corals to grow. And uh, this is just the, the bones. Later on, you'll see... Uh, SPS and things like that growing on these rocks and it's going to look sweet. Another thing that I want to show you guys uh, is the top down view. So that way you can see how it looks from the top. See how much more space that I have. And uh, just quickly look at the corals. I want to say a thank you to Nine Stick Nate. Um, I had did a video on his contest. Only two people entered. You guys missed out. Um, it was myself and a, another reefer and lucky me I won and I won a $75 battle corals gift certificate and uh, I'm going to show you what I get here in the uh, next video. Uh, now battle corals going to look awesome in my tank because uh, there's some high end stuff and uh, I can't wait to uh, add that to my reef tank. Now the future of this tank is just to let things grow out. I have a lot going on here have different frags, mostly Zoas, but I do want to mess around with some SPS. I'll start seeing how these uh, battle corals do in my tank and go from there. Maybe order from them uh, from Adam again. But I am going to be receiving that shipment here shortly. And of course, look out for that video. Make sure you're subscribed so you can uh, stay up to date with that uh, video unboxing. Uh, really excited to get it. Haven't got it yet, but uh, I'm telling you the corals in route. I did go ahead and order a few things for my tank uh, equipment wise. I ordered some new uh, flow. I went to uh, Reef Breeders, ordered the QP16 uh, pumps and I don't know if I'll still keep the RW15s in the tank. Uh, I'll probably have a super lot of flow like that but we'll see um, if the QP16s can are more than enough. Right now the RW15s are handling all my flow. My gyre is not running in my tank right now because it was making a some loud grinding noise. I took it out of the tank. I'm going to take it apart, mess around with it, see if I can uh, fix it because I have some extra parts that uh, came with it when I got it.
But of course, I'll let you guys know how it goes. Uh, hopefully, I can get rid of that grinding noise. If not, I'm going to have to uh, escalate it up to uh, tech support. But I'm pretty sure I'll be able to fix it myself. The pump is clean and vinegar. I just need to see what is going on. And hopefully, I can fix it. If I do fix it, I'll probably put it in a 20 gallon long frag tank or maybe that 20 long will turn into a 40 gallon breeder later on in the future. Who knows? But make sure you guys stay out of the heat and stay cool. Guys, make sure you do your water changes. Don't be like me. You saw how quickly my 20 gallon long uh, got ugly. And uh, make sure you do your water changes, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe and you guys take care.